It's, uh, it's kind of an honor to be here. Uh, I'm a little, I'm happy to be here on a show that's about food, but I'm also a little sad that there's gonna be one more show on TV that's about food. I think we've maxed out. I think we could take a break. I think a lot of the reason that a lot of the kids today aren't losing the weight we want them to is that there's a 24-hour food channel where grown men just drive around the country and rub dry spices into pork shoulders. <laughs> These food shows are getting you into thinking it's a good idea. You're taking your advice from the wrong people. Everyone on that network. Guy Fieri, stop watching Guy Fieri. <laughs> Kids are looking up to him. Stop. I have one rule. If Guy Fieri's been to your restaurant, I won't eat there. That's my rule. <laughs> Why do you wait to see? One, don't trust his palate. Number two, it's not a surprise. He's gonna like it. He's liked it every episode for too many seasons now. Every, oh, for me, that's the grossest moment on television. There are shows where they do surgery. There are shows where they deliver children. For me, it doesn't get any grosser than when Guy Fieri bites into a Philly cheesesteak. That's the grossest thing. When he does that, uh, and he, uh, mm. Just that moment where he just, uh, he has to lean forward so the juices don't get on his bowling shirt. The grossest thing on TV right now. He just leans, uh, leans forward. His eyes roll back in his head. He looks like a minor league baseball coach faking an orgasm. It's the grossest thing on TV. Stop watching it. It's gross. He's a disgusting man. He gets so much sauce on his face, he has to bleach his goatee every week. Stop <laughs> trusting his advice. There's no show on that network for me. Even the cooking shows. I'd love to eat at home. I can't follow along with those shows. I would like to have my own cooking show where we cook at home together. It's called, I Don't Know What Happened. <laughs> where you've never made this thing before, but don't worry, neither have I. Okay, we're gonna ruin it together. <laughs> you can't follow along with these other cooking shows. I don't have 17 little glass bowls with pre-chopped ingredients waiting for me when I get home. Oh my God, this is easy. Oh, no. None of that stuff. I don't even, I don't even know where to get half those ingredients. You can't, they expect you to come home and go, okay, turn on the TV and get going. I can't get any of this stuff you've just described without a three-day scavenger hunt off the top. <laughs> That's why my show is gonna be more like your life. I'm gonna show you great meals you can eat over the sink real quick because you're late for everything. <laughs> We're not gonna have the ingredients you don't have. We're not gonna, what psycho can follow along and go, artichokes? I do have artichokes. Saffron, tons of it, sister. Let's keep going. <laughs> I just hope I get to use up some of this truffle oil I've been stockpiling. <laughs> mm -mm. Uh-uh. We're gonna use things I know you have. Like lunch meat you can't remember when you bought. All the great things. <laughs> That's the first five minutes. We just look at it, feel it, smell it, look for a date somewhere. <laughs> oh God, don't even matter. We're just gonna grill off the poison a little bit. We'll just heat it up. Just heat it up. No, you just... No, you can't. You just, you just grill it a little on the other side. Takes the poison right off. That's how science works. <laughs> Long-term marinating is out. It's ruined. I've been so close to making these meals a few times. You know, I'm not there to win any awards. It's Thursday. I'm a grown man. I've had granola bars for dinner three nights in a row. <laughs> I would love to follow along. And you're following along sometimes. You've made a few substitutions. As long as butter's as good as buttermilk, you'll be fine. You're so close. <laughs> and then they pull that thing on you where the host looks at the camera and goes, okay, we're gonna stop there. We're gonna pop this back in the fridge for a while. We're gonna seal it up and pop it back in the fridge so that the buttermilk can tenderize the chicken. Plus it makes the flavors combine. Tell you what, pal, you can go pop yours back in the fridge for a day and a half. I'm gonna try and grill up what we've made so far. Cause I have to eat sooner, I'm gonna die, okay? I didn't, I didn't show up fed to make dinner. Did you show up fed to make dinner? What's wrong with you? I'm just gonna jam mine into my George Foreman grill and press on it as hard as I can until the juices run clear. That's all I got planned for tonight. I got a life to live. I got places to be. And as for the flavors combining, pretty sure that'll happen when you chew it. That's what chewing is. You know when you eat a chocolate chip cookie and you can taste the chocolate chips and the cookie at the same time? That's your teeth working their magic. 
Doesn't need a day and a half to combine. Marinate for a day and a half. What do you have house guests over? Are you hungry? Are you hungry? You're gonna be here tomorrow afternoon. You gotta stick around. I'm not gonna serve it to you now. The flavors are uncombined. Mm -mm. Eat it now. I'm gonna answer real cooking questions on my show too. Like what's happening to my plastic spatula? Get shorter every time I cook. I'm not cleaning it off of anything though. Am I eating my plastic spatula? Yes, I am. So are you. So are you. So are you. What are you, 50? You've eaten 10 plastic spatulas in your whole life. 10 entire spatulas. You never question it. You just throw out a handle every three months and replace it. Next time you fry an egg, measure the spatula. Fry the egg, measure it again. Let me know how much spatula you took down. You know you're doing it. You know when you're out for brunch, you take a bite of their eggs and go, why do these eggs taste better than mine? No spatula in those ones. All right, you guys are a lot of fun. Thank you so much. My name is Scrap Jen, and enjoy the rest of the fest.